thank you guys for for tuning in here um so this speaker sessions are held in the context of preparation for the metaverse summit which will be held um early next year and i'm here with with my co-host um yingzi from the ubisoft um strategic strategic innovation lab and um pauline Fussell, which is the founder and director of Art Curator Grid and Art Pool. And yeah, we had kind of have a funny story how we stumbled upon you, um, Pauline. Uh, maybe Yingsi, you can share our experience um, during the Lisbon Blockchain Week, right? In uh, October. Yeah, it was uh, fantastic. Actually, we were kind of late because of another event. And then we jumped into the room and we saw a magnificent performance from two dancers. Uh, and we were thinking, oh, are we in the right event? Because I think we were in the like NFT auction event and then there is a performance art. So in the beginning, I was kind of lost in the link, right? But afterwards, uh, talking with different participants, I um, actually understood better uh, how can you leverage NFT, not only for, you know, JPEGs or digital art, but also in all kinds of art, including performance art or virtual reality experiences. So uh, could you tell us more about this uh, art experience that you organized during the uh, Lisbon Blockchain Week? Yes, of course. Um, nice, I didn't know that. Like, um, I'm just learning it. Um, <laughs> indeed, uh, we maybe I can go a little bit backward on just like the what, what what are we doing and and to explain it uh, maybe that will be easier for people to understand like what was going on on that day um but just to ex super quickly explain you we for the past three years built a social network um really centered on art curators um so art curators are the uh, people working very closely with the artists selecting them um, helping them develop their concept, grow their career, um, and, 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 you know, dialogue with them uh, in a sense that it, um, it fit their ideas and, and, and make their work evolve. And the curators are the one as well, putting them in institutions, in exhibitions, in museums, uh, in galleries, and so on. So we built this, and, um, and the main pain point is um, how can I finance projects, you know, like how I can finance uh, an exhibition, a publication, a public art piece, an artwork, um, a performance. And um, and uh, so we came up with Art Pool, which is uh, a, a way to fund global art projects via NFTs. And uh, the event you walk in uh, was a performance of the artist Frédéric Tanjassen. Uh, it's an artist I've worked with and I curated a show as well as a, a, a video work uh, in Hong Kong this year, actually, the show was during Art Basel uh, at Artistry. Um, and um, and I've, well, I've never met the artist uh, because everything was done during COVID and uh, we did every single thing online. And I, I thought like that would be really interesting to finally meet him, finally make him come and see his works and his performance in life. And um, so the, the, the event was a mix of uh, talk about um, art and fashion and, and how, they, how they can evolve and, and enter the open metaverse, uh, which is a specific uh, concept uh, from Outlier Venture, uh, the open metaverse uh, idea. And, um, and well, we, we did the talk and then it was making whole sense to do the performance and we sold NFTs that uh, helped basically finance the artist fee for, uh, for the performance that you've seen. That's fantastic. So um, maybe later uh, in the conversation, we'll explore uh, even more kinds of uh, links between NFT and the other format of art. But uh, maybe before uh, that we can get to know you more. Um, so before getting to know NFT, mm -hmm. uh, were you already in art? And then how did you actually get into the sector and why would you, uh, you know, gave a position of all in now, right? Yes, you'll see everything makes total sense. I, I always was in the art. Um, 
I started in, actually, I started in Shanghai. Mm -hmm. I was like 21. Um, I actually did a business school. So, but arriving in the business school, I was like, why I'm here, you know? And, mm -hmm. uh, and then I quickly realized that um, it has all, all to see with what I, I, I would be doing in the future. And um, I did a master in entrepreneurship um and uh and then i just went in the art mainly the art market originally uh so working for a gallery in shanghai two years and a half there then i met a portuguese artist um that was uh willing to you know like build a studio so i've moved to portugal where i was directing his studio and at the same time we uh launched a project named underdogs um, which is a gallery, public art program and editions, uh, mainly in the urban art movement. Um, and um, then I stopped the studio and I had, uh, I had collectors in Hong Kong who wanted to launch their private art foundation. So I decided to move back to Asia and I was doing like back and forth with Lisbon because I, I kept underdogs. Um, and uh, I was the director of development, uh, which means finding every single idea you can have to fundraise for exhibitions, public program, um, I mean, anything you can think about, I've organized, uh, I've launched the Friends of the Foundation, I did uh, gala dinners, auctions, uh, sponsoring, uh, like everything where you can look for money in the physical world. Um, and I stayed there two years and a half uh, until, you know, I got the idea of, of Art Curator Grid, where I was just thinking, like, curators have such an important role, and, and they are a little bit like, um, I mean, people don't really know, you know, and, uh, and, and the word curator is, is used a lot, but being a curator is a profession. It's uh, expertise, it's research, it's years of looking at works and looking at artists, of accompanying them through the years in their practice. So it's really an expertise. So the word curation today is used a lot, but behind that word, you have like real experts. Um, and, uh, and I thought like, I always looked at what was happening digitally I always thought it was very concentrated on the art market and not so much on the institutional world, uh, which I thought like, well, this is too sad because the role of museums and institutions is, is, is very important uh, in society. Um, and, uh, and the economical impact of nonprofits is massive as well, if you start looking into it. And I thought like, okay, the, the, it, it would be very interesting to start with curators because there is no platform like this. There is no global network like this. And, uh, and of course, like uh, when you're in the arts, you obviously think about the artists because uh, nothing makes sense without them. But uh, I didn't want it to be our team to select artists um, to enter the platform. So that's also why we, we, we went to curators thinking like they know well. They know the artists well. Uh, they have their expertise in their different, um, et, like movements or geographies, or and and this is very rich. And um, and yeah, so Art Curator Grid was born like this, and and that's my past. So you understand the fundraising thing, the the different uh, key players of the art world, and how to navigate. Uh, and I'm as well a, a curator for, for I, I curated shows in Asia in um, in uh, in here as well. Uh, so I've been working closely with artists, and I know the past and the uh, and the way you work, and you you make them evolve. You know. Yeah, um, I have some friends also in Paris here um, who are actually uh, very active, who are or either art advisors or curators. And then some of them are very skeptical uh, with everything concerning NFTs, maybe mostly because the valuation of some of the works that they do not consider uh, closely as art, like the apes, right? Uh, is so highly valued, And they think there is a difference between the reality and uh, you know, what the, the mysterious tech can bring behind. So how did you normally convince uh, this uh, skeptical point of view? 
And um, do you always um, have like a good positive uh, reply or uh, in general, the artwork, the art uh, market and the, um, you know, the art artists, they are still pretty skeptical. Um, most of the time it's very positive, but I think it's as well because of, um, you know, I think we thought the NFT in a very specific way. Uh, we thought the NFT for community and how it could be uh, beneficial to them. Um, I also think we are not necessarily thinking, like talking about the same thing, I th like, uh, <clears throat> I don't know, CryptoPunk and stuff, like uh, today is it's being part of the, you know, art world because you're seeing stars be selling it and so on. But originally it was more creating kind of a member club and stuff, you know. Um, so it's a, it's a utility behind it, which I thought, it, which I think is brilliant. And, and totally, if the artists are looking to, to use NFTs as a, in a way to build a community and, and so on, this is beautiful. Um, but then you can just sell artworks, right? Like, um, mm -hmm. and, um, and the way we, we approach the curators and the artists uh, with the NFTs is just, um, it's a tool, it's a brilliant tool, you know, to own something digitally. Um, for years, the artists were posting their work and not getting anything out of it. Um, and how do we approach it is that first, uh, the idea of, of fundings, um, you know, it's creating monetary value, but not only. Um, so if you sell an NFT to finance an exhibition, it means, yeah, the artist is going to win something. Some, some part will go towards a project where the artist is going to have an exhibition. So you create value that is not only monetary, you create value in, in for you know, an exhibition, education um, for the public. You know? So you have this double sided that, that, that they really understand because that's, well, that's always our point and that's what we want to be doing. Um, we are not just an NFT marketplace selling our works. Um, and, and how do we show this as well is uh, we have this whole social network behind. So, you have content from the curators, from the artists. You can go dig, you can, if you want to read, if it's an exhibition, if it's not a fundraising, for example, if it's just an exhibition, you have all the tools to show your audience uh, your exhibition. So it's not just a, a rank of NFTs you'll see because like what we did until now, we did a few drops. Uh, we were testing things on our side and, and, and in December, you'll have the platform like has, as, as it's meant to be. Um, and you will have content, so you'll have text, you will have explanation, you will have possibilities to see, uh, um, like, um, how do you say, like, uh, backstage in a way, like, you can, if an artist wants to post, like, uh, on the exhibition, the way they create the NFTs, <clears throat> the way they paint, the way they, like, they can be interviewed, so you, we are building all this content for people to understand the practice of the artist and and the nfts are of, you, of course on sale it's it's off to finance something or to to pay an artist and a curator for their work but you have way more content you know mm -hmm. um so content is important because it's uh, it validates a value you know like uh, most of the time in the art market and, and uh, people are like, yeah, but why is this much and stuff? Well, in the primary market, the, price, the prices, they are set up because the artist has a specific CV. Someone starting will have low prices and then the more they're going to be building up their CV, the more the price is going to go up. Then the secondary market is another matter, you know, like uh, it's, uh, it doesn't belong to us. But in the primary market, the prices are set up thanks to the CV of the artist. And here you have a possibility to go and check this because you have the social network behind and you can see with who she or he has worked with, uh, what they have done before, what was the group show next to which artists. So you can validate this. Then yeah, the, the secondary market and the resale, at the bottom of it, we don't, you know, it's not to us, uh, but it happens in the real, you know, physical art world. Like this happened, this, the secondary resale at prices that are way higher, um, and 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 that's like this, you know. So yeah, I think that's how I explain it, and uh, and that's how they understand it. But it's honest. It's because it's just what we like. The team is Alf, Alf Tech Alf, Alf Art, 
And we have this experience of decades in the art world and understanding those things. So for us, like looking at NFTs in that sense, we are looking at it the same way as they would look at. We're just like explaining it and they're like, ah, oh, yeah, you know, because we have the same eyes at looking at it. We are just formulating it and creating a platform, just. <laughs> but but in the end, they understand because we, we, we look at it the way they look at it, you know. Definitely, that's a great explanation and very clear. Uh, if I'm an artist, I would be convinced. But also maybe another a uh, tricky question is from uh, the normal, not established artist point of view. Um, well, this kind of uh, technology and the platform are um, kind of disrupting maybe the traditional art market and some artists who were not known before and then who are not well established, maybe this give them a chance also to be discovered and then to be a real artist, right? So um, you uh, mentioned before, uh, the curators on uh, art pool platform are um, already existing curators and then have a lot of experience in art world and do they actually maybe change uh, the way they look at artworks and select artworks uh, regarding um, the new platform meaning that um, maybe the audience of the acquisition of uh, this artwork is are different also right because they might be the emerging crypto owners instead of the traditional art collectors. Uh, so my question in short is, um, does the curation change also with the new technology? And does the uh, profile of the art collector today change? And then does it impact also the uh, curation of your art? So just the, uh, the beginning of what you said, I think there is absolutely no difference online and offline. You know, you have so many artists that are offline that are not uh, entering galleries, not entering museums and so on. It's exactly the same offline, uh, online. You know, like it's, uh, it's not because you have all these platforms that all of a sudden an artist is gonna go like, some, yeah, but it's the same in the real world, you know? Um, so do, do the curators, I, I mean, we do have curators that are more in digital art um, and and that's that's great because it's it's a large content for them to look into and uh, and find new uh, talents, you know. So in that sense, it's a uh, yes. The curators that are more in the physical art world was very interesting is um, how they are onboarding the artists they work with, and that's what for me is extremely interesting to have a curated platform, is because the artist needs as well this dialogue to understand what can they develop in their practice that makes sense there. It's, 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 it's about like um, that it's consistent in the work they are doing in the, in, in the physical world and how it can continue being consistent uh, online. You know, so the role of the curator here onboarding the artist, helping them discussing and seeing what makes sense and stuff is very important. Um, so it's two, I think you have curators, yeah, digital art that are, that are able to dig more and see more things and, and so on. And as well, like more traditional curators from the art world to, to find ways of them as well onboarding in the NFT space, you know, and understanding. Um, but if you want for us is we are talking to the curators so we can explain them, we can onboard them and then they can pass the message to several of the artists, you know. Um, for the NFT, like do curators curate uh, for NFT collectors? No, I think you, they curate because, you know, like they have mm -hmm. a, a message to pass and, um, and, uh, and they curate for, for people who, who like art, who like the artist and they are trying to um, pass the best way ever uh, the message of the artist. You know, like that's the role of the curator. The curator doesn't, um, doesn't choose because it's uh, it's um, you, they look at all type of audience, you know. I, th I think that's what is important. Is uh, and and uh, so yes to the NFT collectors. Do they really just create for them? No, I think like it's a it's a large scope of people looking into it, and uh, and that's the beauty of it, right? It's because yeah. it's digital, you can have like so much more people on board with you, you know. That's a great answer. Thank you so much, uh, Pauline. 
Um, Paulina, I have a short question um, regarding what you you said earlier, um, especially about utility. Like for me, I've, I've been looking at, at NFTs and you have like this existing NFT market, which was kind of organically built from the ground up and is curated mainly by NFT platforms that exist right now. So those are kind of the big players right now. And you have like the traditional art market, which kind of looks at this other side and is like, it's it's not curated in a way that you would curate um, traditional art because it's really a lot more maybe about the utility, like you mentioned. So for example, you get access uh, with, if you have a board ape, you have access to those exclusive parties um, and so on. And I've had this discussion with a friend and he mentioned that actually in the traditional art world, it works in a similar fashion in that, you know, if you own a Picasso, um, you're known to own a Picasso, you also have like a ticket to, to certain events, to certain places, access maybe to places where other people couldn't go. So I think um, my question is maybe just for you specifically, because you bridge those two worlds in a way. Um, maybe what is the, the, the problem right now? What is the state of, of NFT right now? Um, what do you think about utility? For example, how someone could enhance um, their, the, the value of their art with, with utility, what, what kind of possibilities you see there, but really mainly like what, what, what's happening from your perspective? What is the state of, of NFTs right now? The very first, like uh, I think uh, there is space for everything. That's very important to understand. I don't have the, the, the um, I'll just say the right word, you know, like, I don't think they are right or wrong. They're, we are not right or wrong. We are just bringing a different offer, you know, that is necessary for people who want to collect and collect things uh, that have values that they can, you know, understand, support and stuff. That's, um, that's what is a real curated platform. Um, but there is room for every single other platform. There is room, you know, like there is so many people in this world that you're going to have people that are going to be interested by what we do and others that's going to be interested by something else and maybe both, you know. So um, I don't think there is a problem. I just don't, I just think it's, it's, we are talking about two different types of things completely, you know. Um, and um, one thing that is, uh, that has been striking to me is since I'm in the more of a web three space, it's um, it's the you know I've chosen the art world in my life for the values that the Web three have has, and it's really really true. I've chosen the art world because the artists are people that are open, that are um, that are transparent, that wants to shake things up, that is not okay with the status quo. Um, that are uh, meant to be like, they, you know, like it's very personal, but they open their work to show it to you. Uh, so the community is essential. The, the relationship with the audience, with the public is, is, um, is, is essential. Like, uh, as, uh, like an artist is really an artist because he, he puts things out, he, he, he show it or she shows, you know? So, um, that's what I think is really, really strong. And um, I think utilities NFT can be really beautiful to create communities uh, and, and build audience. And I, I, you know, I was actually with an artist yesterday having dinner and, and you will see, we'll have an amazing project with him. Um, and, and he has this whole project that's make, that I've worked with him for the past year. Uh, we did an exhibition and stuff. And it makes the whole sense, the utility NFTs, you know. So I was explaining him, like I was, he wanted to build a community within his big project. And I was like, this is the way, you know. So like, I would never force your work to go there if it wasn't making sense. But this is so obvious that I'm going to send you tons of docs, read, because that's, that's what you need to do. You know, if you want to build and go there, if you really want to. So I was checking with him, like, do you really want this? And he was like, yeah, I really want this. So I was like, if you really want this, that's the option because that's what's going to bring you there. And, um, and then at the end of the dinner, he was like, yeah, I understand now. You know, so it's, it's, uh, it's explaining. It's like, uh, but, but, but uh, the NFTs with utilities are great too. I'm not going to tell you every single artist on the platform will do it. No, it's not going to happen. Uh, but when it makes sense in the practice, and it's because I can see this because for a year, 
I've been going to his studio, I've been talking to him, I've built a show with him, I've wrote his text, I understand deeply his concepts, and I can see that he would have never go there if I, I would have not told him, look, like if you really want to create this, you need to go for it, you know, uh, because that's your solution in, in the metaverse or NFT space, you know, and, and then you can push even further. So I think it has, it's, it, if it makes sense, it's great. You know, and uh, it's it, it, at the end all of this, what offers the NFTs. So if there is a utility, if there is a, a fragmentation, if there is a nesting, if there is whatever, if it needs to make sense in the practice of the artist. And if it does, you'll see it will make the whole difference to the buyer. Because if the moment you do something that is coherent, you have the possibility to explain it properly, that the person understand and can really benefit from it from the artist to the buyer, you know? So that's where the curator is important, is to create that whole thing. Yeah, to help create a strategy basically for the artist. So, because it's very individual, I think as well, depending on the artist, on his audience, yeah. on what it, kind of art he is creating. And, and yeah, it's true, I, I feel that too. Like for some artists, it's, it's the way to go for others. I'm like, not sure if that's, uh, the way to go for you but it, it's a tool at the end of the day i guess cool and and then you can do uh, there is not just a utility in nfts you know like uh, the collection aspect is beautiful uh to reward the community um the, the fragmentation can be really interesting if if with for specific artists the, the generative art as well can be really interesting it really it, again it has to make sense mm -hmm. yeah i like the way you put it the value of web3 is really inspiring and also opens a lot of different doors for uh, different artists. Uh, from my experience, it's like I talk with a VR artist, for example, uh, we used to have this uh, very rigid uh, thinking of, okay, how do you do co-production? How do you have money from different uh, countries or different regions and subvention maybe from the uh, national minister ministry or something, but NFT really opens the door of a lot of different possibilities, either um, pre in pre-production or in the distribution of the content at on more um, inspir inspiring interaction also with the audience. So that is the most beautiful part for me as well, to discover all kinds of uh, possibilities that are not yet, yet there. So we can actually be the first uh, use case of it, and then imagine all these kind of uh, future uh, emerging uh, use cases that that is going to last for a lot of years, right? For sure. So, and uh, another thing that I think is really interesting, and 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 I'm sure you you you'll agree with me, it's um, again like this relationship with the public is very important, but it's um, it's harder in the physical world to. Um, so I have. I see your pieces. Um, sometimes you meet me as a as a viewer, like as a public, like I'm coming to the opening and I'm seeing the artist, but it's a little bit more rare. It's more like I'm the public and I see your work. But what I think super beautiful is this interaction between Sam and I about your work. You know, and, and all of a sudden you open an amount of possibilities of discussion, and that's what art is. At the bottom of it, that's what it is. It's like the artist bringing their work out there for questioning, for dialoguing, for, for, for uh, putting in question, you know, like so, and, and, and Web3 and all those, you know, channels of communication that, that we onboard, like, like Discord, you know, it's a way of, of, of us talking about your work, even if you're not there. And sometimes you pop up and sometimes you're there and, and, and it's cool, but all of a sudden you create all these connections around one specific work and that's beautiful. And that's very hard to do in the physical world, except like for a specific event where we all go there and we all like, you know, most of the time you sit it, then you have a drink and you can talk a bit, but um, it's harder to share things. It's, 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 uh, and I think that's very like, uh, very progressing in a way, you know, because that's, that's what we want. We want to create discussion at the end of it. Yeah. Uh well, talking about connections, we can't uh, 
cannot talk about you know metaverse because it's kind of uh, what you said in the physical world maybe it's very difficult to connect face to face with the artist to generate discussion with the other people who are appreciating the, the same artwork as you right but there's all kinds of channels as maybe currently discord and some other channels telegrams are generating this kind of discussion but let's say in the near future if we have uh, this uh, metaverse platform uh, where people can appreciate artwork and then uh, have, uh, you know, a more active uh, virtual face-to-face -face, uh, discussion, it will even be better. So my question is, um, how do you position art and maybe artful in this whole discussion around metaverse? Um, I think it's, a, it's very complementary with the real world. You know, like, uh, I'm not a part of uh, the people that say everything like is going to be metaverse and you won't be able to go and see a show at MoMA. You know, I, I still completely fully believe in the value of spaces and the value of seeing art in person and so on. But I also see the value of seeing art that I would never be able to see because I'm not in, you know, Lima or Mexico or, or New York. You know, and in that sense, I think it's beautiful uh, being able to to travel uh, without traveling and being able to see artworks that if the work is well done, it won't be just a, a copy of the work, you know, like it's uh, it's going to be a, as well a, a, um, something really, I hope something really worked on for the people that are in the metaverse who experiment it are, you know, it makes sense. Uh, again, I think that's the the core of, of, of everything, if it makes sense in the artist's practice and with the museum. For me as well, like it's a, it's a total new world for spaces that, um, that can go beyond their space, you know. Um, I, I wouldn't want to see the MoMA like I would see the MoMA if I walk in. I think like uh, it's a beautiful way of, of, of building something different, something new, uh, without the constraints of the architecture and the space. Um, which I think is, is as well a big opportunity for, for creators. And, 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 and um, um, I, I think there is, there is something there. Um, so yeah, for our pool, <laughs> wait and see next year. Um, of course, of course, I, I would want to have uh, something there um, uh, for, for different things because we are building a collection uh, so every fundraising we are buying an nft from it uh, it's a way to show support from you know what we do uh, we like what the curators and, and and the institution and the artists do um, but it's also something like i think it would be nice to to exhibit eventually and having like rooms for the artists to you know be able to, to to play with it if they want to the curators to play with it because uh, it's, i think it's fun you know and um so we will we, we will have that i, I i'm um you know i'm 100 percent sure then when it's another <laughs> it's another um, but we'll 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 test it so we, we should have partners to test it first and and then uh, and then do it on our own yeah so <clears throat> that means doing it on your own means you're going to make a step with Artpool into the metaverse with first uh, virtual spaces where, where actually people can exhibit, for example. I want that, yeah. Yeah, I, I really would like that. Um, because I, I think if we have this, um, it will give great ideas to the curators. It will give great ideas to the artists. It, it will also uh, broaden the audience in a sense, you know, um, and uh, and I think, yeah, that, that would make sense. Uh, I want to test it first. I want to see like how we work with it and how the, you know, like a few curators um, and artists like are, how are they happy with it. Um, I'm, I'm, um, I'm going to be honest, I wasn't, I'm f not fan at all of the 3D rendering of exhibitions. Uh, the exhibition tool we have on the platform is a 2D map of the curatorial concept um, where you can put like more educative content 
So text, videos, the artist working, creating and stuff, and the artwork. So that you understand the path and that you can have more content. Um, I'm, 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 I wasn't, uh, but again, you know, like taking a, 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 a software that you reproduce a space that exists already where you put the works that are not the works, makes no sense. You know, for me, it makes zero sense. I'd rather have a 2D map. But if you have a specific space that is not reproducing a real space where um, you have a community, you have people interacting, uh, that that changed the, the, the scope, you know. Um, so, and as well, if the, the works are, an exhibition is created in that sense with this in mind, and it's not just reproducing the gallery work that is that space and that's what it is, then it makes sense. And, and here it's cool. You know, I see the value of this. So just to, just to wrap up a little bit. So you basically saying that um, it, it doesn't make sense to just take concepts that just work on a flat uh, web screen, put them into the metaverse and say, that's it. It's more about using the possibilities that the metaverse can, can give. Yeah, it's more, uh, I don't see the point of uh, taking a gallery that exists already that have works on the wall physically and to put it in the metaverse. This I don't understand. The, the show was, was done for, for to be seen physically and, uh, and the space is constrained to the real world. And I think like you are not using the metaverse how it should be used, like which is this kind of endless possibilities and, and, and actually make... Uh, and talk to the artists for them to work with with this, like with 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 these tools in hand, thinking like they can do something different than something that they can hang on the wall, you know. Right. Yeah, I made that I made that experience as well with with different online. I mean, this concept of online galleries exists long time already, but it's the most. <laughs> it it doesn't. I I also feel like just my heart says it doesn't work, and and there's so many possibilities with um with VR. So, so just to glimpse uh, in the future real quick, like how do you see, see how can VR experiences um, kind of, you know, leverage the, the, the new art that is created and in, com in combination with NFTs? Like what are the possibilities you see in, in the future? You know, I'm... Um... I'm skeptical until like there is not more people having the possibility to experiment VR. Until there is not a company that find a way to distribute those stuff to everyone. <laughs> I think it's hard, you know? I think like experiencing the metaverse on the computer and going around and like, you know, that's, that's possible. VR, I think it's amazing. I think in the art, it could change it all um because you could really be like into another world and really feel it and and so on even an art piece just an art piece uh but but it has to be more um reaching more people you know like if not you will never be having this impact so i think the the, the possibility are great i think uh artists would want to work with this and develop stuff and but but it's not there yet, you know. Does it maybe start with pockets first, where, for example, you take VR experiences and put them in a space specifically where people go there in person to kind of take on the glasses, get the equipment. They don't have to think about all the technical details and just walk into an exhibition yeah. to maybe that could be the start of it. Maybe, maybe that is, but imagine the power if uh, each, each one of us would have headsets, you know? <laughs> I mean, we, we know, but it's true. We, we all have put headsets on our, on our head, right? Like, uh, I mean, not all, but like many people experienced it uh, by going to somewhere and doing it. It's amazing. Like we all, I think we are all agree on the, like uh, I, I've done stuff at Art Basel or, or even like uh, a week ago to an artist that actually the last fundraising we did. Uh, it's amazing. It's like crazy. It's it's like making you lose your 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 you know your sights and stuff. It's amazing. But how can you push this forward if if people don't have more access to it? That's that's the my main question. And 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 as well, the more people will have access to it, the more artists will be willing to develop things. You know, because again, that's what the 
that's what they are doing as well. They want to to spread their work as well. So, um, but we'll get there, I suppose. You know. Cool, and and maybe on a because now you you talked a lot about maybe some concerns you still have or some kind of some walls that you still see that we need to breach. Um, you know, what are you personally most excited about uh, about the metaverse or or just in general, if you just look forward the next five years, what are you personally most excited about? So many stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm excited about, uh, you know, personally, I'm on a mission. Like, uh, you, you, like I'm, I'm, I'm waking up every morning with, for a very good reason. Um, which is being able to finance the art and culture. So that's why I wake up. And, uh, and, and I think all of this can really open amazing doors and can open to a real global audience that can connect people with one, with one another, create projects, um, have the right people looking at it and willing to support them. And that's that's what I'm seeing. So I see like every single thing I'm hearing, uh, which is token, DAOs, metaverse. I'm seeing in every one of them. I'm seeing a value, and I'm thinking like, how can we, you know, go that way? Because because we have something that has really strong value. You know, physical, digital, whatever. The art is there. The the, the artist is there. So you know, how we can find the best way to onboard um, and being on, honest about it. Because that's what's going to last. And you are asking me long-term vision in a way. Um, it's being honest about what you do and how you bridge things and people follow you if you do it like this, you know, and they understand. Uh, and, and, and they need to understand before coming in. So that's, that's the vision I have. I think like uh, there is many stuff we'll, we'll develop and personally, um, personally for me, it's amazing the the whole the whole diving into this again. Like uh, you know, I went for the art for these values, and I'm finding them again. And uh, and I'm I think that's that's the strength. So let's see in five years where goes the metaverse, where goes NFTs. Um, I think NFTs. You won't even hear probably the word NFT anymore. It's going to be a really strong tool that we all use to sell digital assets. And that's gonna be there and everyone's gonna be used to buy this. And, and it's not gonna be like, you won't tell me NFT art, you will tell me art dot online. It's, you, I, I bought a piece yesterday. I, I don't think you will tell me I bought an NFT. You, Cause NFT is gonna be everything. It's gonna be a, a token of stuff, you know? So it's gonna go there and, um, and, and people will, will understand. And it's then it's up to us to go with the audience as well and and make sure they understand where we are going. Like on the platform, we propose printing, for example, of the piece. The printing has no value, but you can live with it. And I'm sorry, a lot of people still want to live with art and not just on their phone. I'm happy on my phone, but I'm happy to have stuff on my walls. If I had like white walls, I would want to print my NFTs and have them with me, you know. Even if it has no value, the value is not necessarily in the, you know that it's somewhere, but at least you live with something you like. You know, so this is where, where I think it's going to go. Let's see if I'm right or wrong. <laughs> we'll see. I would say I hope that you are right. Right. That is such a beautiful image of the future. And then it's for me, it makes sense, make a lot of sense. Um, it, thank you for sharing your fabulous journey from, you. you know, the traditional artwork and then to going diving into everything concerning Web3. And then for me, it's really the right timing uh, for the existence of people bridging everything that is like, you know, old fashioned or Web2, let's say, uh, maybe art or gaming or e-commerce and then bring these people and these uh, services, this product into a Web3 world. So there are so many possibilities and it's such an uh, exciting timing to do that. So thank you so much for sharing um, your know-how and your vision. And then of course, we are gonna be a uh, part of it. We wanna be a uh, part of it to push uh, everybody <laughs> to look forward to it as well. 
so that's why we are also doing this series of conversation with different experts inside of uh, the, uh, let's say, metaverse. Um, and then to maybe gather everybody together also for the upcoming metaverse summit. Um, and uh, let's try to do something together also for the metaverse summit That'd in terms awesome. of art and artists. That'd be amazing. Um, so no spoiler here, but uh, yeah, let's do something uh, for it because uh, the future is there. We, we're just going to have to make it, right? Exactly. It's in our hand. <laughs> exactly. So thank you again, Pauline. Thank and you. Uh, thank you, thank my co-host, Sam. And uh, looking forward to seeing you another time. Yes, thank you, guys. <laughs>